guys. Today we're talking about how to find a dog behavior consultant. If you have a dog with behavioral issues like my Remy and his reactivity, you'll probably want to seek out a dog behaviorist. In this video, we're going to talk about why dog behaviorists are different than dog trainers, the different types of certified dog behaviorists, and I'll show you exactly how to find a dog behaviorist near you using various directories and websites. To start off, what should you do when you have a dog who is having behavior issues? If you're encountering behavior issues with your dog, your first step should always be to talk to your vet and have full labs and blood work done. Dogs display some pretty odd behaviors, including aggression due to pain or discomfort. All the behavior modification in the world won't help a dog who is suffering from a medical issue. So a full vet check should always be step one for any behavior problem. Step two, jot down the details. This isn't mandatory, but it can be helpful to take notes regarding the specifics and larger context of your dog's behavior problem. The more info you can provide a behaviorist, the quicker they'll be able to get to the root of the issue. Some questions you may want to consider exploring include, do my dog's issues seem stress related? Knowing body language is key for evaluating your dog's stress levels, and we have the link to a great guide in the description below. Could my dog be responding to an environmental change? If you've recently had an additional family member move in or have relocated to a new city, all these environmental changes can build anxiety in your dog, which can affect behavior. What happens before and after the problem behavior? Keeping track of this can provide larger context as to what is happening with your dog. Maybe an older dog is displaying troubling aggression towards a new puppy. But what's happening before the growling and snapping incidents? Is the puppy being rude and invading the older dog's space? Try to observe and record what's happening when you zoom out from the specific behavior incident. Before we continue, guys, don't forget to like and subscribe to us to make sure you never miss out on our newest videos. If you already know you need a canine behaviorist and just want to know how and where to find one, jump ahead. Because first, we're going to talk about how to know when you need a dog behaviorist versus a standard dog trainer. A certified dog trainer is great for working on basic obedience skills with your dog, like sit, lie down, take it, leave it, drop it, etc. There are also trainers with special areas of expertise. For example, some dog trainers specialize in agility training, dock diving, nose work, or therapy dog training. However, most dog trainers are not qualified to work with aggression cases. For aggression issues, you want a certified dog behavior expert. These are professionals who specialize in behavior modification and have experience working with aggressive, fearful, compulsive, reactive, and anxious dogs. Some of them have even received degrees in relation to canine cognition. You can think of a behavior expert like a psychologist. You know how the way we humans behave as individuals can be traced back to deeper psychological issues we've had in the past or trauma? Dogs really aren't so different. Many aggression issues dogs have can stem from fear, stress, or lack of socialization, but because we don't understand dogs as well as we'd like to believe, these deeper rooted causes are easy to miss for a layman. Dog behavior experts will help you figure out why your dog is behaving the way he is and help you address the root cause of your dog's problems. You really don't want to consult a trainer with aggression issues because if you get bad behavior advice from someone who isn't qualified, you could end up doing your dog a lot more harm than good. Which leads us to why you need a certified dog behavior expert. Did you know that anyone can call themselves a dog trainer? Any random guy off the street can decide, hey, I had a dog once and I did a great job raising it. I should become a dog trainer. And boom, they can call themselves a dog trainer. And they can start offering classes. Well, the same applies to the term canine behaviorist. Properly certified canine behaviorists often adhere to an unwritten rule that the title of canine behaviorist should only be used by those who've attained specific certifications that we're going to go into later on. But there's no formal presiding body that governs the use of this title, so any individual can call themselves a canine behaviorist. And unfortunately, many people take advantage of this and will refer to themselves as a behaviorist because at best, they have an interest in canine behavior and don't know any better, or at worst, they think it sounds more prestigious and might allow them to charge more. Now that we've talked about why it's important to find a certified dog behaviorist, let's break down the several types of dog behavior experts. 
In order of the most experience and qualifications required to earn each title, we have board certified veterinary behaviorists, certified applied animal behaviorists, and certified behavior consultants. There are a few different certifying organizations for behavior consultants, and each organization titles their certificates differently, which is why it can get pretty confusing. To help you not feel overwhelmed, know that most groups have a certified title as well as an associate certified title, with the difference being that the associate certified title requires less experience and qualifications than a traditional certified title. That's part of the reason why there are so many different kinds of animal behavior experts out there. Don't worry though, we're going to dig into the most well-regarded and internationally recognized organizations for certifying dog behaviorists and break down all the different certificates they produce. Let's start things out with Board Certified Veterinary Behaviorist, DACVB, the best there is. Board Certified Veterinary Behaviorists are the cream of the crop when it comes to behavior experts. They're trained to solve behavior problems and they're armed with the most knowledge and expertise available. They're able to prescribe medications as well as develop science-backed training plans using the most up-to-date methodologies. These folks are essentially vets who specialize in behavior issues. They've gone to vet school, they've earned a veterinary medical degree, they've completed internships, passed a residency program, published scientific papers on behavior. These experts are usually the most expensive professionals in the canine behavior industry, and they're often used as a last resort for owners who feel as if they've tried everything else. And in fact, many owners of difficult dogs later regret not seeing a board certified veterinary behaviorist sooner due to the huge improvements certain dogs can make with a combination of thoughtful medication prescriptions and an expertly designed training plan. These individuals have seen a variety of very complicated and challenging canine cases, and they are without question your best bet to getting to the bottom of your dog's behavior issues. Unfortunately, due to the rigorous educational requirements and expertise needed to become a veterinary behaviorist, they are often in very high demand with a relatively few available. But if you do want to find one, you can find a veterinary behaviorist through the AVSAB directory that I'll put a link to below in the description. Now we're going to talk about certified animal behavior experts. These are all experts who aren't vets, but have specialized training and have been certified as animal behavior experts. There are a few different organizations that are well respected when it comes to certifying behavior experts. We're going to dive into three of the most highly regarded certifying organizations next. First, we're going to check out the Animal Behavior Society, which is the leading organization in North America for studying animal behavior. The ABS has some of the best experts working in the field of canine behavior. The ABS offers two certifications, Certified Applied Animal Behaviorist, which is C-A-A-B for short. These people have doctorates with a focus in biology or behavioral science with an emphasis in animal behavior, as well as five years of professional behavior experience. They also need to pass an extensive written and oral exam. Next is the Associate Certified Applied Animal Behaviorist which is A-C-A-A-B for short. These individuals have a master's degree in biology or behavioral science with an emphasis in animal behavior. Plus they need to have two years of professional behavior experience and pass an exam. So still requires a lot of expertise, but less experience and a lesser degree than the certified applied animal behaviorist. Unfortunately, on the ABS directory, there are less than 60 individuals listed total, so the pickings are pretty slim. I could only locate one CAAB certified expert in the entire state of Texas. So your chances of finding someone near you who is certified through ABS is pretty unlikely, but if you do find someone, they'll probably be a fantastic resource that's at the top of the crop. Next, we have the Certification Council for Professional Dog Trainers, CCPDT for short, which is one of the leading independent governing bodies for professionals involved with dog behavior as well as dog training. This can actually make things a little bit complicated as there are a lot more CCPDT certified dog trainers than dog behaviorists. And if you're dealing with any kind of aggression issues, you'll really want a behaviorist, not a trainer. 
The name of the certification for animal behaviorists who are certified through CCPDT is Certified Behavior Canine Consultant, Knowledge Assessed, which is CBCC-KA. The certification requires a minimum of 300 hours experience in canine behavior consulting, covering issues like fear, phobias, anxiety, aggression, etc. within the past three years, in addition to a letter of recommendation from a professional already certified with the CCPDT or a veterinarian, along with passing a comprehensive exam on behavior modification. On the CCPDT website, you can access their digital certified dog trainer and behavior consultant directory. And here you can see that we can search by postal code, name, if you're looking for a specific individual, city, or state. Keep in mind that for behavior issues, you'll specifically want to look for individuals that have a certified behavior consultant canine knowledge assessed under their name, not just the certified professional dog trainer title, which doesn't deal with behavior issues specifically. There are thousands of CCPDT certified trainers and behaviorists, but the behaviorists are definitely in shorter supply. And if you live in a rural area, they are in common enough that you might need to travel to a big city in order to find one of these folks. So for example, in Austin, Texas, I was able to find 38 CCPDT certified trainers, but only three certified behavior consultants. The behavior consultants are definitely less common. The International Association of Animal Behavior Consultants, IAABC, is another prestigious and trusted institution for evaluating and certifying animal behavior experts. IAABC offers two types of certification. So within the IAABC, you have a Certified Behavior Consultant, which is CBC for short. This requires 500 hours of animal behavior consulting experience, along with 400 hours of coursework, seminars, and mentorships. It also requires several letters of recommendation from clients, colleagues, or vets. An Associate Certified Behavior Consultant, ACBC, is the certification that's under CBC. Instead of 500 hours, this certification requires 300 hours of animal behavior consulting experience and only 150 hours of coursework, seminars, and mentorships. Quick note on this, I found a lot of conflicting information about the exact requirements for the IAABC's Associate Certified Title, which is why the info on the screen doesn't match up with what I just said. I couldn't even find many references to the certification on the IAAB website, so the exact qualifications for this title might not be 100% up to date. To find either of these certified individuals, you can use the IAABC's online directory that lets you search for behavior consultants by location. I was able to find four CCPDT certified behavior experts in the Austin, Texas area. The availability of the IAABC certified behavior experts is similar to that of a CCPDT certified individual. They're definitely out there, but there aren't a ton of them. Regardless of which kind of behaviorist you decide to seek out, it's important to verify his or her credentials because, unfortunately, it's not completely unheard of for people to be somewhat misleading about their qualifications. Luckily, it's pretty easy to verify a behaviorist's credentials by examining the certifying organization's online directory. If you're in doubt, just shoot out an email to the relevant organization and they should be able to verify the behaviorist's membership for you. Keep in mind that it's also important to make sure that your chosen behavior expert is providing current guidance and instruction. Dog training philosophies have changed quite a bit over the past decade, and you do want to make sure your selected behaviorist is up to date on the scientifically proven strategies. For example, many reputable credentialing organizations have updated their ethics statements to align with LIMA which stands for Least Intrusive, Minimally Aversive Training, and rely primarily on positive reinforcement strategies. However, if a behavior expert or trainer has been part of an organization for a long time, he or she may not personally adhere to the new standards that are in keeping with current research. And heck, they might not even be aware that the organization's ethics statements have been updated. So, even though all the behavior experts detailed in this video should be committed to LIMA training philosophies, you'll still want to make sure to ask questions and get a sense of the individual trainer's attitude. And truthfully, you should probably consider reporting individuals whose ethics don't align with their certifying organization. But maybe that's a topic for another day. Questions to ask your dog behaviorist. 
In order to get a better sense of the behaviorist training philosophies, skill sets, and qualifications, we've put together a few questions you should ask during the initial screening on a consultation. Some of the questions you should ask include, what organization are you credentialed through? Make sure to verify their membership yourself and check the organization's mission statement to determine if it's humane, ethical, and based on minimally aversive strategies. How long have you been a dog behavior expert? All experts have to start somewhere, but generally speaking, you'll want to work with a behaviorist who's already accumulated at least several years of practical on the job experience. Are you experienced in this type of behavior issue? Most legitimate behaviorists have experienced working with an array of problems, but it's always worth discussing the individual's specific experience with the issues your dog is exhibiting. What kind of follow-up programs do you offer? What if I need more help after this? Dog behaviorists usually offer one-time consultation services as well as ongoing training help. Make sure you understand what information will be provided during your consultation and what kind of follow-up options are available if you need more guidance. Do you guarantee results? This one isn't actually what you might expect. You in fact want to avoid behaviorists or trainers who guarantee results. This is because your dog's success largely depends on you and your follow through, two things that no behaviorist can ensure. If they're making lofty promises, you should probably be skeptical. How would you respond to a dog who doesn't understand what is being taught? If you're uncomfortable with any of the equipment or techniques recommended, how would the expert proceed? So for example, some dogs aren't a fan of harnesses. Will the expert in question advocate for something lighter weight? Maybe switch to a collar only approach? These kinds of questions can open the window to the consultant's thought process. Are you licensed as a business and insured? This speaks to the expert's overall professionalism rather than any specific canine knowledge, but it's still important. If nothing else, you'll wanna have some recourse in case something goes wrong. What to avoid when seeking a dog behaviorist? Red flags. Next, we'll dig into red flags, AKA things that should send you running in the other direction. If you're working with a legitimate certified canine behavior consultant who employs current standards and practices, you shouldn't need to worry about looking for red flags. All of the organizations we've detailed in this video prescribe to scientifically backed training methods that have been shown to be safe and effective with little to no fallout. Knowledgeable behaviorists will not use outdated debunked terminology that relies on myths and bad science. So avoid behaviorists who use the following terminology, balanced, dominance, being the alpha, pack leadership, correction, guarantee. As we mentioned earlier, all of the organizations detailed here ascribe to LIMA, which stands for least intrusive, minimally aversive. This means that a behaviorist will always start with the most gentle, positive reinforcement based strategies. They'll only resort to aversives like e collars and prong collars as a last resort when literally all other options have been thoroughly explored. And in fact, according to Lima methodology, the behavior expert should consult with multiple other behaviorists in their organization for suggestions and alternative ideas before even considering resorting to aversives. Very few Lima trainers ever resort to aversives, and when they do, it's a rare occurrence. In short, this means that no qualified behavior expert will be discussing using aversive tools with you unless you've already been working together for probably months at a bare minimum. In light of this, you'll want to avoid any behaviorist who suggests the use of squirt bottles, choker prong collars, alpha rolls, shock, vibration, or citronella collars, hitting or yelling, collar pops, and emphasis on punishment. Now let's talk about terms you should look for when seeking a behaviorist. Lima, which as I said, stands for least intrusive, minimally aversive, force-free or fear-free, credentialed, certified, evidence-based, positive reinforcement, humane and ethical. Well guys, that about wraps it up. I hope this video was helpful. I know how stressful it can be when you're dealing with a dog who has behavioral issues. Hopefully this video gave you some next steps on how to get help for you and your dog. If you're struggling, I promise it does get better. Let us know about your experiences with certified dog behavior experts in the comments below. Thanks and have a great day.